Oh, we are recording. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you, Dad. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to be here with you all this evening. I'm glad to have the opportunity to be able to share, just focusing a little bit uh, about the importance of, of mental health. And I think there's no secret that we all, in some way, shape, or form, have been um, affected by the current events that are taking place in our world, in our country, if it be political, if it be uh, pandemic related, or even if it's just some other sort of pain uh, happening in a real way. So today I wanna thank everyone for being here. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and just get started on the Mental Health Matters uh, live training. So now we're gonna we're, we're gonna go ahead and move through. And, and I want you all just to know this and understand that throughout the course of this presentation, there's gonna be some things that are shared that you may or may not agree with, okay? There, there are gonna be some facts and there's gonna be some, some ask and requests that I'm gonna make of you. I, I would just enjoy yourself, I would just encourage you to allow yourself to be free, allow yourself to be loose uh, because the goal <clears throat> ultimately of this presentation is to serve and support you in a very high and irrelevant way. So with that being said, I want everybody, wherever you are, unless you're driving, I wanna encourage you, just take a moment, I want you to stand up. I want you to go ahead and just stand up wherever you are. Good, good, good. And those of you who are on camera, great. If you're not on camera, I would love to see your face, okay? I would love to see your face. But everybody, I want you to repeat after me and uh, everybody's gonna be on mute because we're not ready for it right now, but everybody's gonna be on mute. But I want you to repeat after me, say, my mental matters. Everybody say it one more time, say, my mental matters. Excellent. Now that you all have already acknowledged that your mental health, it matters. That your mental health has a value. Now we're going to go ahead and dive all the way into this presentation. And first things first, because I know we have a lot of high achievers in the room. I know we have some coaches, we have some admins, uh, we have some, some young professionals and even some student athletes on this training. So understanding about high achievers, high achievers like to know where we're going. John, where are you taking us? Okay, where are you taking us? I'm gonna give you that information in just a moment, but first we have to know why are we going to where we're going? The first thing is this right here, one in four college students. One out of every four. Let's say there's 40 people in this room. 10 of the individuals in this room have mental illness. One out of every four. We're not gonna stay there too long. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper a little bit later. Also, I want us to focus on this right here. This, this, this is crucial. Suicide is the number two leading cause of death amongst college students. We're not even just talking about student athletes, but suicide is number two. And the last stat I wanna share with you is 
46% of Americans. If we round it up, we'll just call it 50%. So half of America will experience mental illness in their lifetime. Let's take it a step further. Understanding that half of us will experience mental illness in our lifetime. Now I want you to think about how many of us may or may not know somebody who we've seen in recent current events or even at the last family reunion. People that we've come in communication with, we've had different interactions with. 46% of Americans will experience mental illness in their lifetime. These staggering, these statistics are truly staggering. So understanding these things, this is why mental health truly matters. This is why mental health awareness really makes a difference for us to make sure that we're educated and equipped to have the tools that we need to best serve, not just the people we work with on a daily basis, but for ourselves as well. You all already acknowledge that my mental matters. So understanding that my mental matters, I have to make sure that I'm in the best place to serve everyone else as well. Next, we wanna focus on the objectives. John, what will we know based on this time we're spending with you tonight? John, why am I giving up some TV time to watch my favorite Netflix show to hang out with you tonight just for this reason? By the end of this presentation, you'll be able to explain a baseline definition of what mental illness is, okay? If, if that's okay with you, just, just write okay in the chat box. Just go ahead and write okay. Just write good. Write awesome, if that's okay with you. The second thing you will be able to provide is strategies to help yourself or your students who are coping with stress who are coping with the pandemic, who are coping with identity foreclosure, right? If you're, if you're still on board with me, either use the, the icon to give me the thumbs up, or if you're still on board with me, just write yes again in the, in, in the comment box, right? Great. And then the last thing is you will, you will learn tools to further facilitate a conversation around mental, around mental wellness. Right, so we're gonna hit on mental illness. We're gonna talk about conversations around mental wellness. And then the last thing is we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do what? We're gonna provide strategies to cope with stress. So let's go ahead and dive in. If you all are with me, just type go in the chat box. Just write go, G-O, just write go. I'm seeing it, when I get five goals, we're gonna move on. Go, 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 go. Excellent. So now. You might, you might just have the question in your head, John, why, why are you so passionate about this topic? Well, first things first, just a little bit about me. I was, I was a student athlete like many of you on this call today, right? I found myself at the University of Texas at Tyler. It was my senior year. And during this time, I wasn't, I wasn't facing the, the, the stress of being the star player. I wasn't the guy who was all on a roll. I wasn't all America. I was none of those things. I was the guy towards the end of the bench. John, why are you towards the end of the bench? Because I was the guy who worked hard and I was the guy who sacrificed his body and dove for loose balls. And understanding that that was my role, it took a toll on my body. And at one point in time, I then, begun, I then went in to take the physical, just you know, routine physical. They say, John, squat down, do the duck walk. I tried to squat and said, ow, my shin hurts. And I tried to do it again. They said, John, just get down, do the duck walk. We'll sign off on the paper. You'll be good. You'll be good to go. Everybody else is in line waiting. They're like, John, just do the walk. Come on, man. You, you holding us up. We're trying to, you know, this is before everybody came back to school. They're like, John, we're trying to go hang out. We got some little free time. Come on, get it. Knock it out. Let's go. And I bent down and said, ow. Later, I realized after I went to go see the doctor, I had a stress fracture in my shin. So then I was forced to wear a boot, and then we fast forward, and then I'm back on the bench. Trying and doing everything that I possibly can just to work myself up 
to getting a spot to where I'm getting back in the game. And then it led to me just feeling like a dark cloud came over me. And then I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to want to show up for, for practice. I'm showing up to games, hung over, and it was like this feeling was over me and I couldn't control it. And I couldn't even move forward. It was heavy on me. So now I, I, I'm so passionate about this topic because I want to make sure that people have the tools that they need. I didn't have the tools then. I couldn't shake it off and get myself out of it because I didn't even know what I was in. I was in a funk that seemed prolonged. So now understanding that, let's, let's talk about what mental illness is because I don't want anybody else to be in the position to feel what I ever felt that particular time. So mental illness, baseline definition, it's, it's a medical condition that disrupts thinking, feeling, mood, and the ability to relate to others. Daily functioning, right? So the things that may come to us easy, right? Daily functioning, day-to-day, -day. feelings, and the ability to relate to other people. Somebody write down the chat box, just comment, just feelings. Somebody write mood, right? These are things that mental illness will ultimately affect and the list is continuing to grow but these are just a few that i want to spend a little time on today next i i want to i want to make sure that <clears throat> i, I want to make sure we're, we're, we're locked in i want to make sure we're on the same page so we, we we got the we got we got what mental illness is right the feeling the mood the ability to relate to to others So now I, I want to give you a quick, quick pop quiz. John, we didn't learn anything yet. Quick pop quiz. And, and I wanted you, I, I want you here for a second to answer this question for me. The NCAA did a survey with 37,000 student athletes. 37,000, three zero, three seven zero zero zero. And, and, and they asked how many students reported feeling depressed during the midst of the pandemic? During the midst of the pandemic, how many students felt depressed? We're gonna go ahead and, gonna go ahead and ask that how many students felt depressed? Go ahead, go ahead and answer, weigh that in. How many students felt depressed during the midst of COVID-19? Okay, some people are saying one. Okay, one's lead two. Thir okay, 30% is leading the pack right now. Excellent. Let, let's see what you all came up with. See what you all came up with. Okay, so you all said the majority of you all said that you think 30% of students felt that they were depressed during the midst of the pandemic. Good, good. Well, you all, the answer, the answer is one out of every four. One out of every 12 felt depressed during the midst of the pandemic, and that's out of the 37,000, 37,000. that were surveyed. I want you to really think about that for a minute. One out of every 12 out of 37,000. So if we just divide 12 by 37,000,
that gives us 3,000 in 83. That's like 10% of 37,000. Yeah, that'd be 12. Wow. Just, I, I, I want to just put that out there and just, just, just put that on your mind for, for a moment, just to really process through and just think about that. Now I, I want to, I want to talk about what mental illness is. Cause we talked about, we, we, we talked about how mental illness is a medical condition. Right. That, that's, that's what we already talked about. I, I want to go a little bit deeper though. So we talked about it being a medical condition. It affects thinking, feeling, mood, daily functioning. We talked about that. But secondly, I want us to know that one out of every four develop mental illness in their lifetime. So it's common. The last thing I think sometimes might get lost in translation. We also want to realize that mental illness is something that is, that's treatable. Most mental illness can be treated uh, by way of medication, diet, therapy, exercise, and even support. These things make recovery possible. So it's common, it's treatable, but lastly, it's, it's a medical condition. Okay, let, 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 us not, let us not forget. But let's, this, this is the part I really want to, I want to dive in a little bit deeper. What is mental illness not? Okay? What is it not? By a show of hands, how many of us have heard it said before or we've seen on TV? Oh, that's just your crazy uncle. Oh, that's your crazy brother. Oh, your daddy's so crazy. By a show of hands, how many of us? One, two. Okay. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Thank you. Thank you. So one thing that we have to keep in mind is by us being educated and by us showing up today saying we're going to learn more, now we become responsible for the information that we've been entrusted with, each and every one of us. You all and me alike. So now if we see somebody out there saying, oh, that's your crazy young mom, don't, don't say that. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's appropriate. Right. So, so let's talk about what mental, mental illness is not, it's not something that's imaginary. We just talked in the last slide to say that it's something that's common. Okay. So it's not imaginary. This is something that that's very real. This is something that, that can't be, that can't be played with and we should take very serious. The second thing I want you to know is that it's not something to get over. I remember growing up that there was, there, there was a phrase that was always said when I played football, I was not the best football player there. However, when different things happen, you know, you fall and, and sometimes you want to cry. And people say, just get over it. Just put some dirt on it. Well, mental illness isn't one of those things that you can, you can will away. I'm, I'm a man of faith but I don't believe mental illness is something also that you can just pray away. I believe in prayer, but at the same time, I also believe in therapy. I also believe in therapists as well. So it's not something that, that you just get over. And lastly, it's, it's not a character flaw. At times when we see individuals or we see things that we don't always necessarily understand, we just begin to put labels on it to where we can To where we can box it in, right? To where we can compartmentalize what we're seeing, but that's not that's 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 not how this that's not how this works, okay? Because it's a medical condition that does not define individuals. So let's be aware, and let's be very cautious when we begin to thinking, and before we put labels on people, let's let's ask before we assume. Right, somebody asked in the questions as people were submitting forms, they said, how can we begin to start the conversation? Always be curious. How are you doing today? What do you need from me? 
right? So let's begin to keep those things, keep those things in mind. What can mental illness be caused by? Sometimes we might, sometimes we see the individual and we don't know where this came from. Mental illness can come from trauma. We know things that can create trauma can be COVID-19, so pandemic. Trauma can be based on different experiences that individuals have had throughout the course of their life. Because we all come from different places, you all working with student athletes from all over the country, all over the world. People have different life experiences. So therefore, they might have a level of trauma that comes from an area where we might not be familiar with certain things. So we can ask certain questions to create a safe environment and a safe place for them to share. Some may not be in the position and may not be ready to share just yet. However, understanding that it's a trauma, so it's a sensitive area, let them know that whenever they feel open or whenever they decide that they want to talk with somebody, let them know that they can trust you and that you're open to having that conversation. The second thing a mental illness can be caused by is, is a chemical imbalance. A chemical imbalance is something that takes place in, 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 in your brain. Chemical imbalances takes place with, with, with your neurons and different things uh, like that. And also, we're, we're talking about, about genetics. So this is something that could be passed down based on maybe a parent that you've had developed a mental illness. Maybe someone else you know developed a mental illness. I was watching Money Heist on Netflix. Anybody a fan of Money Heist on Netflix? Money Heist? OK. And the gentleman who was locked up in what they called a prison, but it was really like a three by three box that they put him in. And then they covered him with a bag and they put him through a traumatic experience, right? So seeing that, that was something in his environment that affected the way that he functioned that affected the way that he felt and that affected that impacted his ability to relate to other people you see it throughout the show that when people are trying to have a conversation with him he's struggling to engage because now he doesn't even know what to say because he keeps having flashbacks of being in that box so our environment can cause these things maybe we're in a daily stressful environment it doesn't have to be someone growing up across the world, across the country. It can be someone who may be exposed to a, 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 a lifestyle of poverty. It could be somebody who was exposed to their parents doing this or doing that. So these are things that we want to keep in mind as we begin to always lead being curious, ask more questions. See what people need and desire from you. Because ultimately the goal, is, the, the goal is the same for you all as it is for me. We're trying to help develop these young leaders holistically. That's why I focus on mental health, that's why I focus on personal, and that's why I focus on professional development. Because it's all necessary for us to be the best individual that we can be. Next, I, I, wanna, I wanna put a question on the floor. I, I wanna put this out there because it's poll time, it's poll time. And when something stressful takes place, to my coaches, my admins, my young professionals, my student athletes, when something stressful takes place for you or the people you serve, how do you respond? Go ahead, go ahead. The chat box is open. Somebody come off mute. Somebody talk to me. If not, I will call on you. But somebody talk to me. What do you do when something stressful takes place at work? When something stressful takes place with coach? When something takes, come on, somebody come off mute. Talk to me. Talk to me. 
talk to me. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody, please. Yes, sir, Coach Joe. Coach Joe, how are we doing? Doing good, Jonathan, doing good. How are you? I'm doing well, Coach. Uh, excited to be here. Excellent, excellent. Coach, what, 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 talk, talk us through, what, what do you do typically when you get put in a, in, in a stress situation? And everybody, this is a safe space. Anything discussed here goes no further than here, okay? Goes no further than here. We're going to keep it here. So let's go. Coach, what you got? Well, John, when I get put in a stress situation, uh, man, sometimes I just ball up and want to go to sleep. All right, Coach. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing that, Coach. Thank you. For sharing that with us, uh, who we got? Who we got? Miss Al is uh, is it Alyssa, or is it Alisa? I always want to make sure. Alyssa, okay, Alyssa, Miss Gates, yes, ma'am. When you get put in a stress situation, what do you do? How do you handle it, John? Uh, sometimes I have to find myself on a patio drinking a margarita. Okay, I can understand that. I can understand that. I'm not gonna argue with that. I understand uh, completely. And does that typically work for you, like? Does that manage the stress or does that mitigate or eliminate? Talk to me. Uh, John, well, honestly, most of the time it gets it done with the stress. Um, but typically, uh, you know, I, I don't want to find myself there too, too often. Okay, well, that, that's fair. That, that's, certainly, that's certainly fair. Uh, one more. I want to hear from a student athlete. I want to hear from a student athlete. When you're put in a stressful situation, how do you handle it? Talk to me. Who do we have? Who do we have? Student athlete. Student athlete. Uh, who we have, Miss? Yep, yep. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Come off mute. Uh, Miss Ashley. What you got for us, Ashley? John, what's going on? Hey, Ashley. I'm good. I'm good. When you're put in a stressful situation, how do you handle it? John, for me personally, I just journal. Really? Okay. How long have you been journaling? Uh, I don't know, like about two weeks now. Good, good, good. And has that has that been beneficial for you? Like, is that does that help you or like talk talk to me? Well, I think it, it's pretty good, and just just in regards to uh, you know helping me uh, manage what I'm going through, manage my emotions, manage my feelings, um, just to ultimately get through the day. Okay, good, good. And have you have you happened to share the strategy with anybody else? Like, has anybody else ever? Say, hey, you look like you're not, you know, not that stressed out. So how can you help me? No, nobody's really asked me. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for sharing that with us, Ashley. So you all, the, the the thing that I've realized is that if I'm not careful, I'll put myself in a stressful situation. And a lot of times I'll look just like this. Ah. has anybody if you felt like this before in the comment box just write wow if you've ever felt like this like you came into work after the weekend your email your emails you had like 200 plus emails you're at home trying to eat dinner with your significant other with your partner you're just trying to hang out and then your boss calls you coach is sitting you if you've ever been in any one of those situations just write wow in the chat box for me, please. I just need to know if I'm talking to my people. And I actually know to make sure we're on the same page, okay? Okay, we got one wow. We got two wow. We got three wows, okay? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the way that it goes sometimes. Like, that's really, like, that's really how it goes. And the, 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 cra the craziest thing is about that is, The crazy thing about that is we always, we always do what we know, right? We always do, like we always do what we know. That, that's just the, that's the way that we operate as human beings. We just do what we know because what we know is what we've always done. And that can be dangerous in some cases because sometimes the way that we've seen things done in our lives, 
and I'm just going to say coaching because coaching is probably one of the best examples. If we've always been coached by an individual who yells, who screams, who cusses, more than likely, we're going to think that that's the way that successful coaches do it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Anybody, do you agree? Do you disagree? And of course, I mean, there's exceptions to every rule. Everybody has their own personality when it comes to coaching. However, more than likely, what you're exposed to often or what you repeat, then that's what you ultimately become. Okay? Excellent. Agree, agree, agree. Okay, you said disagree. Annie, come come off mute. Tell me why you disagree. Okay. Okay. So so think thinking about that, now I wanna just I, I want to just sli slightly pivot and, and, and switch gears really quick. Because like like we just talked about. how mental illness can affect us. And we just talked about ultimately, when we're put in a stressful situation, how do we address it? Now I wanna, I wanna just take a, I wanna take a stab in the dark right now. So when we're when we're faced with a stress when a stress situation takes place, I I, I want you all just to I want to just share just a few a few different ways that we can go about this, okay? If we're if we're dealing with somebody else, we're working with somebody, we're we're assisting somebody. The first thing that we always can do is we can practice empathy, okay? And practicing empathy doesn't always come easy to everyone. However, when we make sure that we give people a safe space and an unfiltered space to share what's on their heart, what's on their mind, what's weighing them down, this can help or begin to help alleviate some of that stress. So first, that, that's what we can practice. This is something you can practice with yourself or this is something you can practice with somebody else. But the second thing right here is this, mindful self-compassion. Mindful self-compassion. John, what is that? So I've provided a resource sheet for you all. It's a couple of sheets actually uh, that give you a few more strategies, but also give you a few videos and things like that. It's a PDF. You'll get that after the recording, just so you can see some of these practices. But mindful self-compassion is you taking a moment and giving yourself some grace. Right? I know we all have our to-dos at the beginning of the day. We have a set list of items that we desire to accomplish. We want to get done what we want to get done. And when we don't, sometimes we beat ourselves up. When we didn't make all of our shots, we beat ourselves up. When we felt that we could have done better on our tests, we beat ourselves up. So I want you to begin to practice mindful self-compassion and that looks like you relax me saying, let me focus on the things that I did do today. Okay, I did this, check. I did that, check. Now, we're focusing on the things that we can control. Ultimately, there's no point in focusing on things that we cannot control. Because when we do that, we'll continue to stress ourselves out. We'll continue to wear ourselves thin. So focus on trying mindful self-compassion. And then the last thing is we just normalize. We, we can normalize therapy. And, and those you might say, John, my environment and my genetics. Nobody ever went to therapy. Nobody ever talked about therapy. 
Or some people might say, I can't even afford therapy, right? So understanding these things, the first thing I, I would just encourage you to say is talking to some, finding one person that you trust. One. If it's a best friend, if it's a confidant, it's a, it's a mom, it's an uncle, it's a dad, it's a brother, it's a coach, it's an academic advisor. Find someone that you trust to talk to. People say, John, how do we start this conversation? What does that even look like? The first thing you just ask them is, how are you doing? One way I like to approach uh, reaching out to some of my friends, I've, I've been doing this since the pandemic, and I say, how's your mental health? How's your mental health? Because what we do know is that this pandemic has put a lot of stress on people. We saw one out of 12 college students have said they felt depressed. And the reason they feel that is because their normal is getting disrupted. Their normal is getting shifted and shaped and turned all around and they're back home and now some are on campus and they're trying to get back into the routine that created a sense of security for them because ultimately structure creates security. So you wanna to begin to talk with someone. You wanna encourage them to talk to someone. If it be you, if it be someone else. But I know some of the programs that we have on here, some of you all have sports psychologists. If you feel that this person is talking about hurting themselves or someone else, then we have to tell someone. However, there's also hotlines that are available, suicide hotline, talk space, and I have those resources available in that document that I'm gonna share after the presentation. But that is truly essential to make sure that we encourage them to talk to someone. But we always have to remember the ABCs always be caring. How would you want someone to treat you if you knew if, if they knew that you were having a bad day? How would you want someone to approach you if you were going through it? Would you want them to tell you, man, just get over it? Would you want them to tell you, man, it's just that you're having a bad day. People say that sometimes, not realizing how insensitive it is because this is the fifth day straight, but this is just the first day you're sharing it with someone. So always be caring and lastly, remind them that it's okay to not be okay. With this Instagram filter, all these different things, we crop it, we cut it, we post the perfect picture, we post the perfect tweet. And I've been there, I've done it. I mean, I've typed it, I've tweeted it, I've deleted it. I've posted it on Instagram and deleted the picture because I didn't get no likes. I've been there. But ultimately, we have to normalize and humanize ourselves. Coaches, some of us, I've heard Dr. Tim Elmore talk about it. We have to be velvet bricks. That we have to check in, see how our players are doing. How are you doing? No, like off, like off the record. We're not talking about sports. We're not talking about your education. How are you doing mentally? Then they began to share a little bit. Like, okay, well, you know, I, I know that's tough. I, I know you're going through it, but we still have to set a standard. That's what the Velvet Brick is all about. The Velvet Brick talks about being still strict or structured, but still being soft and empathetic. So we have to remember to always be, always be caring. We can't just tell them to put, it, put on a happy face. Right, that's, that's, that's just not gonna, that, that's, that's just not gonna cut it. That's, that's, that's not gonna cut it at all. But here, here are a few ways that, that, that you can just, here are a few ways that you can approach the topic, okay? Just, just a few do's and a few don'ts. First do, how can I help you? 
how can how can I help? Let me put a caveat out. Okay, let me put a caveat out first by saying this. You have to always reflect that we genuinely care about the person when we put these things into practice. Okay. But first things first, how can I help you? How can I help you? Another one after they after they share, after they share, uh, whatever it might be. If it's something that you don't feel a big deal, say, oh, it's no big deal. No, don't say that. But you can say this. Thanks for sharing. I know that might be difficult for you to say. I know it might be difficult for you even to come out and share that. But thank you for taking the time to share that with me and trusting me with that information. Another thing that, 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 that we can begin to say, because some of them might be facing identity foreclosure, facing challenges at home, facing whatever the current struggle or challenge may be. I can't imagine what you're going through right now. Man, that sucks. I can't, I can't imagine what you're going through. And then just plug them together. I can't imagine what you're going through, but how can I help you with that? After they share, thank, thanks for sharing. I appreciate you trusting me with that information. Here's another one. Is, is, there, is there anything that I can do to help? I mean, I know I'm at the university. I know you're at home. But is there anything that I can do to help? Is there anything I can help you do to cope? To make sure that, that you're your best self? Anything? Because I can't imagine what you're going through. And then lastly, How are you feeling today? There, there, there's an app called Joyages, and it's a free app. You can get it on the Android or on the Apple iOS platform. And before, when you log in, the first thing it asks you, it says, how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? And you just rate what you're feeling. One to 100, you rate what you're feeling. And then you go into the app, they have mental health exercises. They have exercises for dealing with stress and different things like that. Um, but I would encourage you, maybe you, you can just check the app out for yourself and see how you can benefit from it as well. But these are a few ways that we can just approach the conversation uh, to get the ball beginning to roll. Some things that you do not do, okay? There's some just don'ts. And here are a few right here. Just deal with it. Imagine you sharing something vulnerable to your partner. Are you sharing something vulnerable to somebody and they're the first person you share with and they say, man, just deal with it. Girl, just deal with it. I guarantee that'll be the last time that I share anything with either of those people. Next one is everyone feels that way sometimes. That's false. The statistics told us that one out of every four individuals, 46 million individuals, are affected that's not everyone that's 46 million okay so let's so let's practice a little empathy a little empathy there and then you probably brought this on yourself you know for that for those players who who might have a bad attitude you brought this on yourself you always had a bad attitude you come to practice mad you brought it on yourself it's your fault yeah, okay. Coach, go ahead, put me in a transfer portal because I'm out. Not, I'm not going to deal with that. Maybe just try to think happier thoughts. Imagine telling this to a child who came up from a traumatic childhood. Just try to think, try to think happier thoughts. Duh, if I would have been able to think happier thoughts, then I probably wouldn't have told you. We have, to, we have to be a little sensitive here. And then lastly, we've all been here, but we haven't though. We haven't. So tell somebody that and then tell them to put on a happy face and I guarantee they'll be at the transfer portal and then your program will be in whatever news outlet that you pick, okay? So, so let's, let's make sure that we're sensitive around this topic and 
and around this area because once again, we always do, we always do what we know. We always, we always do what we know. And I just wanted to show just a, <clears throat> so I, I can't I can't really go all the way in on on, on, on mental mental health mattering without without asking you all this question here. Okay, and as I wrap, the, as I share this with you, want to go ahead and prepare to prepare to open it up for 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 question and answer. But coaches, I, I want to ask you all, how many hours are you putting in just on a, on a weekly basis? Like, how many hours are you work? I'm I'm truly curious. Comment in the chat box for me. How many hours do you put in on a weekly basis? And be honest. Be honest. Go go ahead and just comment down. How many hours? Okay, we got forty. We got fifty. Okay, sixty plus seven. Okay, seventy. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. Coaches, well, thank you all. The reason I want to ask that because I put I put a poll out because I was curious myself and I was like, how many hours are coaches putting in on a daily basis, right? How many hours are coaches putting in on a daily basis? And then this is what the survey showed me. And mind you, I follow primarily, I, fo I follow and have followers primarily of people in student athlete development, admins, coaches, et cetera. And we said that we're putting in 60 plus hours a week for the majority of the people that voted. And that was just 36 people. So now when it comes to mental health and mental wellness, I wanna ask you all, what self-practice, what self-help strategies are you putting in place to make yourself the best version of you for your family, and then ultimately to best serve these student athletes. Somebody come off me. We need to. We need to talk. Let's talk. Come, come, come off me. I need to. I need to speak with some people. If you don't come off mute, I'm gonna call on you. Alyssa, ma'am, how are we doing? Good, Jonathan. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How many hours are you putting in a week? Uh, John, about forty. Okay, forty. That's not bad. Standard. You know, forty, forty-eight. That's around standard now. Um, but how, how are you practicing self-care? Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. All right. All right. All right. Now I want to go ahead and take this time. We'll go ahead. If there's any questions, I know a lot of you all wrote questions coming in, and I wanted to make sure that we address those questions. Uh, however, at the same time, um, I know that based on just uh, our time here today and based on everybody being here, I, would, I know I wasn't going to be able to answer all of those questions. But if you have a question at this time, please go ahead, ask your question, and I will definitely stay on until we get all of the questions answered. But, but just before we get there, I want to let you all know once again, uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, if there is anyone who would like further information or if there's anyone who would like to have a further discussion or anything like that, I would just uh, encourage you to go ahead and just write your information down over in, in the chat box. <clears throat> to write, write your information down in the chat box. J just write me, me, write me in the chat box and then we will... Uh, follow up with you. Just write me and write the best number to reach you on, and we will definitely uh, follow up with you. And then let's, let's go ahead and answer any questions uh, that you all may have at this point in time. And like I said before, you all will get a resource 
uh, email to you tomorrow because I know you all work too much. So I don't want you looking at the resource tonight, but I will get it to you tomorrow so you can reference and so you have uh, resources for, for podcast suggestions to listen to. Uh, you have resources for hotline numbers to call. You have resources uh, for best practices in regarding to uh, managing stress. You also will, uh, it, it, it's, it's a really, really good resource, um, but it provides you all of those things based on the questions that you all initially asked. Okay, but if there's any question that we need to answer tonight, please go ahead and ask it. And I wanna make sure I answer those questions at this time.